small cove on the western side of Catalina Island. Here, sunlight warms these quiet waters. The cove has some special visitors. They are leopard sharks. Dozens visit this cove every summer. Usually, we get but mere snapshots of the lives of wild animals, so it is a rare treat to be familiar with the day-to-day -day lives of these beautiful creatures. Still, much remains to be learned. At night, even the water in the shallows is cold. The animals of the Rocky Reef night shift patrol the shallow waters, such as this California spiny lobster. They'll eat anything remotely edible. In early morning, the sharks mass in large numbers, just offshore. Here, the sharks mill about, waiting for the waters to warm. The group consists mostly of large females, although smaller individuals, perhaps young pups, are seen occasionally as well. One common myth about sharks is that they must all swim to breathe. That's not the case with leopard sharks. They do just fine sitting on the bottom. But still, most prefer to cruise slowly about. The sharks don't seem to pay much attention to each other at all. Scratching on the bottom may be an attempt to remove parasites. Perhaps the shark finds them itchy. Although leopard sharks feed over sandy bottoms, I haven't observed any of these sharks feeding. This appears to be solely a resting aggregation. Many of the sharks spend their entire day here, never venturing closer to shore. But some of the sharks are on the move. Here, they pass through a sparse kelp forest. The water is somewhat warmer here than it is further offshore, and the day is still young. These sharks are poculotherms, so as their surroundings warm, so do they. Basking in these sunlit waters, the sharks on average raise their body temperatures by 1 degree Celsius. This may not seem like much, but this temperature change could result in an 8% increase in metabolic rate. This could significantly decrease gestation time. 
since many of these are pregnant females. The sun rises higher and animals move closer to shore. By midday and into the late afternoon, some can be found in water so shallow as to hardly float them. That means this is a great opportunity to get up close and personal with these sharks. The water here feels warmer, even to me, and the sharks are definitely enjoying it. While in the shallows, these sharks do something pretty cool. They darken their skin. This helps them absorb heat even faster. It could also protect them from the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays. Kind of like a temporary tan. So we've seen lots of leopard sharks, but what other elasmobranchs live in this cove? Shovelnose guitarfish. These guys seem to hang out with the leopard sharks a lot. Maybe it's because they prefer the same habitat. It may be hard to decide if a guitarfish is a shark or a ray, but most scientists consider them more closely related to the rays. commonly seen large ray off of Arthas. Bat rays have a large venomous spine located at the base of the tail. But since it's so close to the body, they can't actually lash out with it. So if you keep your distance, you're totally safe. Round stingrays, these pancake-sized rays, are common in shallow water in Southern California. Buried in the sand, they're almost impossible to spot. Stingrays swim by sending a wave down the sides of their pectoral fins, combined to form a disc. Watch this ray turn by upping the throttle on one side. While they might look awkward swimming, round stingrays have incredible control over their flexible discs. It allows them to burrow straight down and even move around while completely buried. These elasmobranchs all share the sandy areas of the cove. By nightfall, the leopard sharks again begin to move to deeper water. Round stingrays spend most of the day hiding, but come out at night to feed. By then, the leopard sharks will have left the shallows of the cove, and the cycle will begin again. <laughs>